The Voyager 1 is now a starship. The space probe launched from Central Florida 36 years ago has made it beyond the solar system. The first human-made object... Next, NASA says its Voyager 1 probe, the most distant human-made object in the universe, is sending usable information to Earth again. Well, it's just going out into our galaxy, towards the heart of our galaxy. It's just sailing now in the space between the stars. And this is why we want Voyager to keep on going. So when Voyager 2 suddenly turned back, the world held its breath. For over four decades, the spacecraft had traveled faithfully outward, further and further from Earth, slipping into the vast dark reaches of interstellar space. It had long passed Neptune, crossed the boundary of the heliosphere, and moved into uncharted territory becoming a silent witness to the cosmos far beyond the sun's protective influence. Then, in an event so unprecedented it shocked even the most seasoned scientists, Voyager 2 reversed its trajectory. Before we start, smash the like and subscribe buttons for more updates. The event wasn't marked by a sudden mechanical fault or the gradual decay of the probe systems. It was deliberate, intentional. That's what made it terrifying. For a probe launched in 1977, powered by a nuclear battery and controlled by aging Earth-based systems, to suddenly halt its forward drift and turn, on its own, was something that no one had expected and no one could fully explain. As the Deep Space Network received the first telemetry from the change in direction, the implications began to unravel with chilling clarity. The turn itself was not chaotic or flailing. It was precise. A slow, deliberate yaw pivoted the spacecraft a full 180 degrees. After years of facing outward into the unknown, it now pointed back the way it had come. No human command had been issued. No maneuvering instruction had been programmed in recent months. Voyager 2, in a region of space completely untouched by human presence or known forces, had acted on its own. That revelation sent ripples through the global scientific community. Observatories around the world redirected their focus, desperate to track the probe signals watching as it started to transmit with an urgency never seen in decades of interstellar travel. The data coming through was fragmented, distorted by the enormous distance and ancient technology on board. Yet, within that distorted stream, there was something different, something that had not been in any of the prior transmissions from interstellar space. The frequency pattern had changed. The signal now bore a signature that didn't match any previous readings from space. Buried deep in the data were oscillations in a narrow band, eerily rhythmic, unlike cosmic background noise or pulsar emissions. Some likened it to a beacon, while others said it resembled something closer to language. Not a language we knew, not even one we could understand, but something structured, purposeful. As engineers scrambled to stabilize the connection and decode the signal, Voyager 2's sensors relayed bursts of high-energy particles that had not been present in previous years. Instruments that were assumed to be degrading due to age suddenly surged back into activity, as if rebooted or reawakened. The magnetometer registered fluctuations stronger than anything seen since it first passed through Jupiter's magnetosphere. The cosmic ray subsystem showed patterns consistent with a highly localized disturbance, something dense and massive that had not been catalogued. The deep void Voyager 2 had crossed for so long now seemed to teem with invisible presence. The probe's cameras, long thought obsolete due to distance and darkness, attempted to capture visual data. What came back were frames saturated in static, but behind the interference was a silhouette. Angular, vast, and unmistakably artificial in geometry. It wasn't a comet or asteroid. It had symmetry, straight lines, proportions that nature simply does not produce in deep space. By the time this data reached Earth, a strange silence had fallen over global communications teams. Those who interpreted the information were not just scientists anymore. Cryptographers, linguists, psychologists, and even military advisors were brought into private high-level briefings. Voyager 2 had seen something. More than that, it had reacted to something. The spacecraft had not merely turned back due to mechanical error or environmental stimulus. It had responded as if in recognition, or worse, in warning. No announcement was made, but word leaked, as it always does when something this monumental occurs. Within hours, amateur astronomers reported unusual fluctuations in radiation data from deep space listening posts. Forums, encrypted message boards, and fringe science sites exploded with speculation. The consensus, 
born not out of hysteria, but the sudden consistency of leaked data, was simple and terrifying. Voyager 2 had encountered something that defied our understanding of physics, engineering, and isolation. It wasn't just that the spacecraft had turned around, it was why. Because it had seen, or been seen by, something else. The region of space Voyager 2 had entered was assumed to be a lonely stretch of the interstellar medium, a vast field of tenuous gases, rogue particles, and silence. Yet, the data now showed that the area was more active than previously believed. There were gravitational anomalies, measured by slight but consistent shifts in the trajectory even before the turn. Instruments that detect dust and micrometeoroid impacts showed symmetrical clustering, something only possible if objects were intentionally placed or moving in formation. And then came the pattern. It started as a burst in radiation, followed by a pause, then a sequence of pulses that matched the Fibonacci sequence, an unmistakable fingerprint of intelligent origin. It repeated four times before going silent. After that, Voyager 2 began its turn. It was no longer a question of whether we were alone. That moment had passed. The new question was more difficult. Who or what had noticed us first? The implications of this were paralyzing. Everything known about space exploration was built on the assumption of a silent, indifferent universe. Life might exist somewhere, but contact was far off and distant. But if Voyager 2 had encountered something, if it had been contacted, then the cosmic timeline had been rewritten. We were not the Watchers anymore. We were the Watched. And the craft had turned back, not stopped, not drifted, turned, as though it had been dismissed, or rejected, or worse, warned. Engineers reviewed decades of data, every transmission, every faint signal since 2018 when Voyager 2 first crossed the heliopause and entered interstellar space. Hints began to emerge. Slight variations in velocity, power spikes at impossible moments, unexplained gaps in transmission. All of it could be noise, but viewed in retrospect, they looked like footprints, like the signs of something moving, slowly, deliberately ahead of the craft, just out of reach, just ahead of perception. If something had been guiding it or studying it, then its final turnback was the culmination of an interaction that had been unfolding for years without our knowledge. Speculation erupted about what exactly had been discovered. Was it a structure, a vessel, a field of sentient machines? Was it a form of life so different from our own that it could only be described in terms of pattern and field, not body or matter? The lack of light beyond the sun's reach meant that whatever Voyager 2 encountered, it was likely non-luminous, and yet it had presence, mass, shape, influence. It had altered the spacecraft's course not by force, but by revelation. For Voyager 2 to turn back meant it understood, or had been made to understand, something out there was not to be crossed. The scientific implications alone were staggering. The laws of motion, communication, and autonomy had to be rewritten. If a probe launched in the 20th century could somehow receive and respond to an intelligence billions of miles away, then there were mechanisms of interaction far beyond current understanding. This wasn't just about aliens or first contact. It was about the universe folding back on itself, revealing layers hidden by millennia of ignorance. There were whispers that the frequency emitted post-turn bore structural similarity to Earth-based command languages. Not exact matches, but echoes, suggesting that either Voyager 2 had been understood or something had learned to mimic us. Even more disturbing were sudden increases in signal activity detected by the twin Voyager 1 probe, still drifting in a different direction. Its transmissions grew erratic just days after Voyager 2 turned. Although it had not reversed course, it began emitting in parallel frequency bands, seemingly without cause, as if responding, as if echoing something between them. Then came the final signal burst. Voyager 2 sent one last burst of high-frequency data that contained a repeating pattern. Not binary, not Morse. It consisted of alternating prime intervals, number sequences that could only be recognized by those capable of mathematical cognition. They pulsed like a heartbeat, then stopped. Silence. No more telemetry, no system data, no positioning signal. Just an empty void where once a beacon had flickered through the darkness. The world didn't know what to do with this. There were no missiles to launch, no diplomacy to offer. What could humanity say to the unknowable? Nothing. 
And so the planet held still. Conversations slowed. Leaders canceled appearances. Telescopes turned not just to Voyager's last known location, but to every dark corner of the sky. What was once empty now shimmered with potential meaning. Every spacecraft launch now seemed like a flare into a forest we didn't know was watching. Every future mission, every signal, every whisper from Earth had to be reconsidered. Had we made ourselves too visible too soon? Had Voyager 2 in its long and lonely journey crossed an unseen boundary not meant to be touched? The sheer scale of the question left even the most hardened skeptics silent. Because the question was no longer, is there something out there? It was, why did it make Voyager turn back? And we may never want to know the answer. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, leave your comments below and tell us. What are your thoughts on Voyager 2 turning back and its shocking discovery? We want to hear from you. Thank you for watching and see you next time.